So let's talk about why you should love, love short selling stocks. Maybe not in the sense of you go and sell short a stock yourself, but in general, you should absolutely love the concept. In fact, even if you never do short sell, you should still love short selling. Really quick, what are you talking about? I'm a beginner, I'm just getting started in the markets. No problem at all. All short selling means is you make money when prices go down. So you wanna see a price of a stock of whatever asset you're trading, Bitcoin, futures, Forex, anything. You just wanna see that value, that price go down. And if it goes down, you're making money. Now, if it goes up, you're actually losing money. So that's the, that's a flip. It's all it's just totally reversed around. But that's the context. Short selling, you make money when prices go up. Or excuse me, short selling, you make money when prices go down. See, I can't even remember. Short selling, you make money when prices go down. And if the price goes up, you actually lose money. But why should you actually love it as somebody that maybe may never even go short selling? Well, here's the thing, and this is where I and the, the source of this video is coming from a lot of people think short sellers are like evil or short selling is bad or it's like unethical. And it's real, it's not at all because I, I mean, a market needs to have two sides. But like I said, what short selling actually does, it's kind of a, a sick and evil trap for the longs. It's a sick and evil way that people that wanna buy stocks, that wanna invest, that believe in the companies. It's a sick and evil trap that they are setting to the shorts. And what do I mean by that? Well, just to walk you through the dynamics. So if this is, you know, a short, meaning somebody that wants to, you know, go and short a stock, when they do that, in order to short, you sell first. Now, this is where all the, you know, kind of the, the bad press, I'll call it. Well, yeah, the short selling. They're, they're selling, you know, they want the prices to go down. They, they're selling people's stock. And that's all true, but it's a, it's a half truth. So this right here represents how they enter, right? So yes, in order to enter a short side of trade, you need to sell. But like I said, what gets lost in the shuffle is that, and not to insult your intelligence, but you know a trade has two parts, right? You have the entry and then you have what? You have the, the exit, right? You need to actually get out of the trade in order to, to make your money or you know take the loss. But and a, a trade is not complete until you enter and then exit. So over here, we now have the exit. And here's the cool part. Here's why you should love short selling, especially if you're just somebody that buys a stock, believes in the company, and you think, no, this company's great, they're, they're going to do well, they're gonna keep on growing. In order to exit, a short has to buy. They, and, and again, to get out of the trade, they have to buy. So what does that tell us about this situation over here? This is created what? As far as the, the stock is concerned, guaranteed buyers. So let me ask you a question. If you know you are in a stock, and of course you wanna see the price go up, prices go up because of buying, right? Not to insult your intelligence again, but buying is what causes things to go. The more people that buy, the higher price goes. Just basic, basic stuff there. So knowing that, don't you think it is a good thing? Wouldn't it be a good thing if you had a bunch of guaranteed buyers in your stock where you knew that there are people out there that have to buy? Now, when they buy, that, that'll be a little different, but they have to buy. There are guaranteed buyers in the stock that you're in. That is a great thing. And that's what I mean about the evil trap, right? Because if the company you're in, and let's just use the one that's, uh, at least at this point of the recording of this video, one of the most famous ones of, you know, a good quality, I guess it's still maybe debatable on if this is a good quality company, but they're, they're doing very well stock price, right? Is TSLA, Tesla, right? Think about it. The past several years, you had a bunch of shorts coming in. They were selling. And their whole premise was Elon's gonna fail, Tesla's gonna fail as a company, and because it's gonna fail, prices will go down. And that was their premise. They thought it would fail, so they would sell and sell and sell and sell. But the more they sell, the more what happened? The more guaranteed buyers came into the equation because, well, in order for the short to end the trade, they have to buy. So, the, you know, like I said, over the years, oh, Tesla, this, Tesla, that, Tesla bearish, you know, 
sell, 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 more and more guaranteed buyers. And then more recently, you know, what was is known as a short squeeze happened, meaning they were wrong. And Tesla kept on chugging, Elon kept on making production numbers. And like I said, you can still maybe debate it, but as far as the stock price was concerned, the stock price absolutely exploded upwards. And one of the huge contributing factors to the stock price exploding upwards, which again, is what you want if, if, if you're buying to invest, was because you had all these guaranteed buyers that had to sell. And they were watching the price go up and watch the price go up and watch your losses get bigger and bigger. Because again, when prices go up as a, as a short, you're losing money. And eventually they said, I gotta get out or I'm gonna lose my entire account. I, I need to get out. So they have to buy. Well, then what is buying cause? Well, buying causes the price to go up even further. Then you had other shorts saying, I can't take it anymore. I, I gotta get out of this trade. So how do they get out of the trade? Well, they have to buy. So now you have a bunch of people buying to get out of the trade, which what? Causes the price to go up even further. Then you have more shorts, more guaranteed buyers. There's like, I, I gotta get out. So do you see how this is a very explosive situation, assuming the company has its act together? Now, if you decide to you know, invest into some company that you think is great and they turn out to be a clown show, well, welcome to the markets. You're not gonna always invest in the right companies. But that doesn't mean that shorting is actually evil. It just means that, hey, maybe the shorts were right. That was a bad company. But if the shorts are wrong, they are absolutely gonna help the price go up even further and further and further because they are guaranteed buyers. Now, of course, there's an exception out there. Well, if shorts are out there and then they start making lies about the company and they're trying to do all this sort of malicious stuff to send the company and the price down, I agree, that, that that's sketchy. But let's also be real. Longs do that all the time, right? That, have you ever been on a message board? To the moon? What is to the moon? To the moon is just trying to get the price, trying to get as many people as excited as possible so they buy, so they cause the price to go up. So there could be plenty, and I mean, have anybody ever heard of Enron? Enron, you know, they did, it wasn't the, sh you know, the shorts actually exposed Enron, but they were out there saying this and saying that, so they could try to get their prices up higher and higher and higher. So again, and that's bad, right? A company should not lie in order to get their price up higher, and people should not be lying in order to get a price down lower so that they can make money from the short side. So th that, I, hopefully we can all agree on, but you can't sit here and pretend, well, Shorts are evil because they lie and cause prices to go down. That's true, but longs also lie to cause prices to go up at times, which both cases are wrong. But as far as why you should love short selling, you shouldn't necessarily love short selling, but what you should love, as somebody assuming that the company is great, is guaranteed buyers. And where do the guaranteed buyers come from? Well, by shorting the stock itself. So hopefully this helps, hopefully this can open your eyes to see that, okay, yeah, maybe short selling gets kind of a bad rap, because at the core, if something is producing guaranteed buyers in a stock in a company that I believe to be of A plus quality, well then, hey, those shorts are gonna get trapped and they're eventually gonna have to buy and just cause you know those short squeezes to happen as, as they're referred to in the market. So hopefully this helps, like I said, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave any comments down below, especially if there's ideas about maybe future videos that you need clarification on or whatever. And you know, just let me know your thoughts on shorts. Have you seen people out there that are all upset at the shorts? Uh, you know, any, see anything, got any good stories about that? I'd love to hear them down in the comment section. And then also, if you enjoy this video, I'm confident you'll enjoy a lot of the other videos on the channel. So check it out and hopefully you decide to hit that subscribe button as I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.